Whereas Rowley continued, to Christian people at home, the missionaries' work justified colonial expansion and control since conversion to Christianity and salvation would restore the balance against conquest and expropriation. Missionary activities offered soothing reassurance where the need for any was felt to the consequences of the planter, recruiter, miner and pastoralist. And whereas materialism and spiritualism are not opposing and antagonistic forces in Aboriginal people's culture, rather over the eons they have been reconciled in equilibrium. This equilibrium is maintained by our paramount cultural value, respect. In the culture of Aboriginal peoples of Australia, the goal is to receive from the spiritual beings. In contrast, Aboriginal people observed that in the non-Aboriginal culture surrounding us, enough is not enough, more is better. We observe the materialism and spiritualism have become opposing forces that are not our business to try and change. Ours is to accept the world as we find it upon our arrival and to protect our Mother Earth from any form of violations. And whereas it is our sacred duty to wage resistance against any form of threat that would violate our Mother Earth. <laughs> yeah. Our ancestors' frustration with the invaders was our, princi our principle of respect, which meant that it was not up to us to dictate to the invaders how to live. Instead, the, invader, the invaders' aggression against Aboriginal peoples was so violent and intrusive that it was intended that we should be annihilated. Our ancestors' hopes for respected coexistence in a relationship of peace and friendship with all beings and things was thwarted, was thwarted by greed for material wealth and whereas the original instructions for peaceful coexistence between Aboriginal peoples and the British invaders was not adhered to nor respected. As far as the British authorities were concerned, it was the law and the respect was to be mutual and universal. It was declared that the Aborigines were to be afforded protection under the governance of the British government and that the Aborigines should not be molested or disturbed in the parts of the country where land was allotted as reserves for their use and benefit. And whereas today we observe that in practice, the respect paid to this de decreed instruction from the invading British government has not been fulfilled. The crucial point being made is that the colonial authorities and successive Australian governments have been responsible for the breaches of these instructions. Thus, the breaches of these legal instructions are described as fraudulent, treasonable and genocidal, all of which have been committed by the illegal and political establishment of the British and the domestic colonial governments of Australia. And whereas, in consequence, the non-Aboriginal people and their Aboriginal collaborators are not so much governing us as attacking us, treating us as squatting trespassers in and on our own lands, if we claim to them. They are destroying our Mother Earth in favour of profiteering by multinational and transnational corporations, killing our peoples under the smokescreen of crimes masquerading as minor misdemeanours. In the guise of civil and public disobedience, locking our peoples away in their prison institutions. Thus, they maintain the war of physical and psychological intervention and attrition upon our peoples. Systematically, we have been and continue to be killed, infected with diseases, beaten, imprisoned, threatened and sexually preyed upon. Aboriginal peoples are psychologically held up to contempt and ridicule, patronised, brainwashed, bribed, corrupted and then criminalised for trying to defend ourselves in an attempt to exist as free peoples in our own right, own right wishing to exercise our right to self-determination and independence.